All right, thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Today is May 17th, 2021, and we thank you and appreciate you for joining our virtual meeting, our 10 a.m. virtual work session this morning. I will start by calling the meeting to order with roll call. I'll start with District 1 Commissioner Mitchell, uh, Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. I know he's on. Commissioner Robinson. Okay. Commissioner Carthen. Okay, I, I see you, Commissioner Robinson. I see you. Okay. President. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you. Go. Okay. Commissioner Carthen, and I know you come. You're going to join us momentarily. And uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Mm -hmm. And Chairman. Okay, we have four present and we have one of our commissioners joining us momentarily. So we have a quorum for the commissioners. I'll start off this morning uh, asking or requesting the clerk to check our, our uh, agenda to make sure we don't have anyone signed up for uh, public comment. Clerk, do we have anyone signed up, uh, signed up for uh, public comment? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. We have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, uh, Mr. LaVon Dixon. Okay. I believe he is on the line already, but before we... <laughs> And Mr. Dixon, just want to remind you, you have three minutes to address the board. And when your three minutes are up, I will um, let you know so you can wrap up your comments. And um, if you could just repeat your name and uh, your subject that you're going to speak about. You can go ahead and begin, Mr. Uh, Dixon. No problem. My name is LeVon Dixon. I own a home in Douglas, uh, Douglas, Georgia, uh, from this standpoint. Uh, Commission Chair, uh, Chairwoman Jackson General, I think she's very familiar with me. I've had a couple of interactions with her. Uh, I have a two part question. Uh, one is I sent over a series of questions to uh, Chairwoman Jackson Jones and also the other uh, commissioners as well. I've never heard any response back from anyone regarding it. Uh, my questions were surrounding the $160,000 wind up having to pay out uh, for an agreement that my commissioner actually broke uh, uh, regarding uh, 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 some attorney fees that had to be paid out on his behalf. Uh, I sent over a series of questions regarding that matter. I was trying to get uh, some more information surrounding it, and I've never heard anything back from anyone on that and i want to see if, if if a response is actually going to be given or if it's just going to be ignored uh from this standpoint so i uh, i think i've sent out a couple of requests on that as well i'll be happy to go through the questions one by one online so we can get them on record uh i've requested additional time where i can be able to do that but that was denied so i'm limited to three minutes so i'm not sure if the three minutes will allow me to kind of walk through each of the questions but if, th if that is not the case i will be happy to sign up next week and go in question question by question and make sure they get on the record uh, for that uh, from that standpoint. The other part of my question is, uh, Commissioner Jackson Jones, you were actually very helpful in spearheading uh, getting some repair work done on the water issue uh, for the water damage that's coming into my house from the flooding aspect of it. Uh, the repair work that was done was uh, was shabby, to say the least. Uh, they came up and scraped some gravel in front of the house. Well, actually not in front of the house, in front of the stormwater drain uh, from the standpoint. So I'm not sure what that goal of that scraping uh, 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 was in front of the stormwater drain, uh, what it's supposed to achieve. Uh, it, 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 it's... it's doesn't look like it's going to change anything in dynamic of the water flow. It doesn't look like it's going to eliminate any problems that I've been having with the water flow. Uh, I've offered, I've requested that uh, the Commission Chair Jackson Jones I can come out and take a look at it herself uh, with Miguel uh, present so they can look at the work themselves. I'll be happy to send pictures of the work that was done. Uh, we had quite a few people that were standing around. Uh, looking as they scraped up the gravel, uh, but they scraped up scraped up about a half inch of gravel, uh, and, and just left some scrape marks in the in the street. And, and I'm assuming that that they're stating that that was work. Uh, that's something that they planned. Uh, when I looked at the uh, actual uh, uh, diagram of what they actually stated they were supposed to do, it, it doesn't even correlate anything close to that. And I would welcome the opportunity to hear what type of water flow engineer actually came up with that strategy of what they employed or came up with that with that with uh, with that method methodology to use to kind of fix the water issue. Uh, I spoke to a couple of water flow engineers, and there there's nothing close. Uh, to remedy the issue uh, with what was done. Uh, so I'm still kind of stuck in limbo with that aspect of it. 
as well with the water flow issue that's been happening. Uh, so I, I still need some additional guidance on that. And the other uh, other aspect of it is how does this process actually work in terms of we get a voice to speak, so I get a chance to come over and speak uh, to my commissioners, to the commissioner of council. Are you all required to respond back, or is this something that I just say online and it, 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 it just – dissipates over time or just choose to ignore the comments that are made? Uh, uh, do our, our, our commissioners required to give comments or feedback or respond to the questions that I have? I mean, I'm new to this, this particular area this, this, from a government policy standpoint, especially city government, so I'm not sure how this, this all happens. I would love for someone to kind of elaborate to me on this, this whole process. If it gives citizens the opportunity to speak, that's great. Uh, but if our thoughts are just going to be ignored and not responded to, I, I mean, I, I'm trying to understand the basis of it. If government is still going to interact uh, as if citizens who pay the taxes and, and who provide the services for the government to the revenue for the government to exist are not going to, you know, have their, their voices heard and not going to be responded to their questions, I'm still a little lost at the benefit of this whole forum uh, from that standpoint. Um, this was, this, I think I sent over a request for the questions that uh, were, were very valid uh, from that standpoint. I've never heard a response back. And, you know, I've been on this forum uh, a few times in the past, and it's been a similar action, whereas I didn't hear back from anyone regarding questions or statements that I've made. Uh, so I just want to get an idea for, for someone, a commissioner that's not in my district at all. I will welcome your feedback on it as well. Uh, who does, doesn't oversee my district or how it's supposed to work. Uh, uh, Mrs. Watson, if you can kind of explain that to me as well, uh, that'll be great uh, uh, from that standpoint, uh, because I do plan to be more active uh, in, 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 in city and local government. Uh, I'm going to be here for a period of time. Uh, uh, I think my interaction with my commissioner has really motivated me and kind of opened me up to, 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 to get involved in more areas that I, I never thought of in the past. So I do plan to be a presence in some capacity, especially during election time and in other capacities, any way I can be involved. Uh, I'm going to be more active uh, uh, from that standpoint. So I do not plan to go anywhere. So I would like to be able to develop some dialogue and some interaction with with with, uh, with, with you, uh, Commissioner Jackson Jones, in a, in a very constructive and positive way uh, uh, from that standpoint, uh, moving forward uh, uh, from, that, uh, from that perspective. Uh, but I think that covers uh, everything that I want to touch base on. Uh, but I, again, I would like to reiterate, I did send out a series of questions uh, that I would like some feedback on regarding those questions that I sent out uh, a couple times last week. I think I sent them to every uh, city council member on, on board. Uh, if they're not going to be responded to, just, you know, someone can just send an email back saying I, I, we choose not to respond. That would be fantastic. That will let me know that I don't need to waste my time and, and send them out to the commissioners again. Mr. Dixon. Uh, if they are going to be responded to, that will be great. I'm here. Okay, um, your your pastor three minutes. If he could just wrap everything up real quick, please. Okay, well, I think that summarizes everything for right now. Uh, I do plan to be on uh, on the next go around uh, in the next couple of weeks uh, and the subsequent weeks as well uh, from that standpoint. Uh, but I think that summarizes everything up until this to this juncture. And I, I appreciate everyone's uh, opportunity to speak with you all, and uh, I look forward to speak with you again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Do we have any other citizens on the line that would like to make any comments? Chairman, being none, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Clerk Watson. Thank you again, Mr. Dixon, for coming in and expressing your concerns today. Let me just uh, reiterate and just, uh, just clarify something for you. This, uh, the moment for our public comment is primarily for our citizens to speak. We wanted, the Board of Commissioners wanna hear your voice. And of course, we, uh, uh, in, in terms of response, uh, the question that you have, the questions that you have posed to the Board of Commissioners are dealing with legal ma legal matters. And, and I'll just be honest with you, I don't have any plans on, of responding. Uh, certainly we can chat, but it's nothing that I will put in writing because again, it is not, uh, number one, relative to any matters related to myself, but uh, uh, just in honor and respect of my commissioner that this matter is related to certainly is, is legal. And certainly we ask you to please, if you could, um, you could just, uh, maybe if you have a question, maybe you could uh, post a question to our attorney. Um, and certainly uh, regarding your water, want to take a look at that and certainly we'll ask our county administrator if she could just have our, um, our um, Miguel Valentin, who's the director of transportation, to take a look at what your your concerns are, and 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 maybe if it's not uh, working right now, if it's not the plan that has gone forth is not amenable, 
maybe we can make some adjustments. But uh, certainly I'm going to leave the, that matter in our um, county administrator's hand to work with our director of transportation. And uh, certainly my office is open and I look forward to speaking to you real soon. Board of Commissioners, we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, we have the minutes tomorrow. I ask that you take a look at those minutes and be prepared to approve accordingly. Tomorrow, Board of Commissioners, we have a proclamation. Madam and Chair. that, yes, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. No certainly, you may I? Yes, you have the floor. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Regarding the meeting minutes, this is to the county clerk. Um, I just want to make sure that we clarify, and we can talk after this. This is just more of a, a, a marker for the pen. Uh, regarding the, the the subject matter of, all, of our auditor that put forth a recommendation um, that were very clear um, in the meeting minutes that there was a need for clarity for the board of commissioners to set forth an, an ordinance and as well as for a decision that need to be made regarding the legal ordinance, if any, that will be driven by the three constitutional officers. I just want to make sure we got that language right and that there's a, a, a distinction. So just as a marker, we want to clarify that. So I'll... I'll um, uh, we can put it, I mean, we can talk about how you do that. I'm sure you captured it in an accurate way and you've got the reading, but I just want to make sure we're clear. So, again, we'll leave it at that. I'll come back to it later. Thank you. You okay, County Clerk? You got that? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Thank you. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. We're going to move on to tab number four, proclamations. Board of Commissioners, we have a proclamation tomorrow recognizing the Wellstar Healthcare team. And that proclamation will be uh, read by me. And then, of course, we we are just very anxious and excited about celebrating Wellstar and Douglas Healthcare team, uh, particularly as they have uh, maneuvered through this pandemic and have done an extraordinary job. We're going to move on. County Administrative Business. County Administrator, do you have anything to bring forth to the Board of Commissioners this morning? Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Board and staff and the listening public. Um, as you probably have heard, um, we have started to receive guidance on the American Recovery Act funding from the Department of Treasury. Um, not significant changes since what we heard when the funding was initially announced. Um, what will happen is at our next work session, we'll bring forward some paperwork and authorization for us to initialize the process of receiving our first tranche of funding. And as a board, and as um, we will need to start to think about a plan as it relates to um, how that funding is going to best suit and affect the um, Douglas County population as well as Douglas County government. And so that has been front of mind. Um, I'll also let you know that I've had several meetings. Um, not just with staff directors, but also with our elected officials and constitutional officers. Those are going extraordinarily well. Um, last week, I met with the uh, tax commissioner and um, had really good news as it relates to an item that's on the agenda today regarding his software um, and several other meetings. So I'm, I'm starting uh, week five. It's gone by fast. But I'd like to let you know everybody's been very supportive and cooperative, and um, it's going really well so far. So unless there are any questions, that's all I have for this morning. Um, Chairman Jones, you are muted. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sharon Subedan, our county administrator. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for our county administrator before I move on to the next item? Uh, Commissioner Robinson, I see your map. Can you you're, you're muted? I'm there you go. There you go. Me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Right. You you're muted again. Unmute yourself once again. You're still muted. There you hey. go. There you go. You're unmuted now. Am I? Yes. Yeah. We can All hear right. you. That's me and my my legislative aide on who gonna press the button. Okay, got it. All right, we're good. Um, <laughs> real quick, um, regarding the uh, Recovery Act. Um, yes, week five. We appreciate your, your presence. So, 
And I, and so my question is, as you align um, a long-term capital plan, um, there were some pre-existing needs that are already of record. There are some new needs that are coming online based, based on new stakeholders who are at the table. So prior needs versus new needs. Um, we've always known that we've had a, a need for long-term capital planning and we, we're, we're down that path. Uh, the American Recovery Act is is a new source of funding, right? So it's something that just is it you know it just dropped in, right? So there's our uh, normal long-term capital plan approach that we're looking to. So those things that how we fund capital items is typically SPLOS, T SPLOS, GEO bonds, etc. There's only about four funding mechanisms that the the board has in its toolkit. Um, I know that we're, we're down the path of a strategic plan um, and, and you guys are working on that framework. Um, at what point, so here's the question, at what point will we sit down and that be revealed to us as far as the approach, right? Because we're, we're being made to ask decisions. Um, and again, I know you're, you're, you're becoming new to this, but we're being made to ask decisions to have long-term implications. Like when um, one of our congressmen came to us and we had to commitment to pursue $80 million, right? And so we, you, we've got these moving parts and I'm, I'm looking for when will we anticipate, uh, I know we talked about doing a budget retreat. Well, that's usually July and August, but this stuff is coming down now. So when will, question is when will we meet as a board to talk about this specific item. Uh, and two, I would encourage uh, the administration to, um, Commissioner Carthen um, 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 sponsored um, a resolution from our, our last round of funding from last year. I'd, I'd like for us to also acknowledge that, to keep it up with a separate bucket, there was a resolution on how will we appropriate that. So there's appropriation associated with this, with the federal money, and then there's normal operations. And I, I'm looking for an alignment, a more crystallized approach to, to capital planning. So when will we have that? Uh, when can we anticipate that conversation? I'll stop there. That's all I needed. Would you like me to respond, Sharon, or how would you like me to do it? Well, you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, let me start by saying, uh, Commissioner, we are certainly working and moving in the direction to meet with the full board as soon as possible. Uh, this funding, this uh, recovery relief funding has a lot more restrictions than that um, so-called contingency funding we use. Contingency was straight off. Uh, it was a reimbursement from the CARES Act. But and, and of course, then that contingency funding that we that we're utilizing now was part of our it, it was really uh, could have been appropriated back into our general fund. So that was contingency. But this recovery relief has quite a, a few uh, restrictions to it. So I'm quite sure that uh, Sharon, our community, I mean, our county administrator and our external affairs director will uh, they will brief us to allow, to give us an idea of what the restrictions look like. And then certainly I love the idea of a resolution and I know the board, uh, all of the board, we like the idea of a resolution, but we just wanna brief you all and let you know exactly what those restrictions look like. And then maybe we can build around those restrictions. And certainly, I'm going to yield to you, our, our county administrator, if you could add to what I just uh, stated. Well, I will certainly go back and look at the resolution that was previously passed and, of course, look at what the funding can be used for and um, see how we can have an alignment with our needs based on some capital um, planning has been done. Um, our outside financial advisor did a pretty thorough job. Um, I think there are some updates to that that are needed. So to your point, Commissioner Robinson, some pre-existing capital needs, as well as some that I've identified even since I've been here. Um, but what I think we need to also look at is how does that align with what the funding can be used for? And so we already have the finance group looking at any lost revenue, because certainly that is a that is that's low hanging fruit. That's clearly something that can, can be used for. And we do have some pockets of lost revenue. So that will be probably our one of our first asks. 
But once that reimbursement is made, then this board will have the opportunity to appropriate that money. I will make recommendations on how I think you ought to do that, but certainly the decision is yours. Thank you very much, both of you, for your response. Um, um, yes, it's just a, it's, it's just alignment of the overall plan. Um, and this is something that historically we, 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 we've evolved to a need to mature financially um, in this area, which is why we, we invited you here to the party, which is why uh, we're seeking um, a, a director um, of, of finance. Um, in other words, like no duly noted, but, and you've got it. But we also recognize our current state of affairs, like, okay, now show us. Um, I, we, we're having conversations here live. Show us, show us the plan, right? Show, show us the detail that's associated with that so that we can make an adequate, uh, rich decision. So you guys get the point. I don't have to belabor this. Um, and my last point, and I'll yield the floor, which is to your point, are we still in um, executive mood? Um, last year, the Board of Commissioners passed a resolution almost this time last year when obviously we went into lockdown. What a year to think that we're not on the other side of that. That was a dark time. Woof. Um, and to be here at this moment. But we went into executive mode to give Madam Chair full authority to run things. Um, I don't know what the governor has done recently. Does, is that still in effect? I've always known that we as a Board of Commissioners can take that back to normal operations to, to, to be it. Um, I'm open to my, my peers' comments regarding that, but are we still in a state of emergency? Um, or, um, um, it, but it's something that we properly, and is the county attorney out there, I want you to weigh in on that. Are we still in that mode, Ken? Um, and if not, I mean, just legally, are we still in that mode and does there need to be an action taken or does it just by default, it rolls off? How about I say it uh, that way? I think the current order expires on May 22nd and I do think there is a partial order in place. I think it's in, it's always been in y'all's pur purview as separately under home rule as to mm -hmm. how y'all treat an emergency. Uh, but as far as the state, there are some easing of restrictions, but there's still restrictions in place. And I think the last order modification date was through May 22nd, and another one is probably forthcoming based mm -hmm. on what I've heard. And if somebody else knows more than that, I'm, please weigh in. No, that was sufficient. I just, again, May 22nd, I'll let you guys respond. And I've, I've taken adequate time, I'm sure. Let me leave you on the floor. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're going to move on. Uh, County Administrator, is, does that wrap up your business that you have to present to the board? Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. We're going to move on to our business items, the Board of Commissioners, which is tab number five. Tab number five is authorization for the chairman to sign service contract for juvenile programs utilizing uh, Recovery Unlimited as a treatment provider for strengthening families programs under the CJCC grant ex, uh, executed on 316-21. We have our director, Jennifer King. You have the floor. You could expound on this business item. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this is a, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Um, this was a requirement for this grant that that we executed back in March. Uh, the provider that we will be using for this treatment service recovery unlimited. And um, this just sets out the agreement with them to provide the services, the specific services that we are requesting in the unlimited is a partner that we've had here in juvenile programs for a long time, uh, they provide a lot of various services to our kids and families here. Um, and then just to kind of retouch on strengthening families, this was an evidence-based program that works with youth and families to communication skills, their coping skills, the way that they work I mean, within this program. Um, it also includes a family meal every week that we also provide through the grant um, to just encourage those ways of, of being together and communicating about all the things that are going on in their lives. Thank you so much, Director King. Board of Commissioners, we have any questions for uh, Mrs. King? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.
We're going to move on board of commissioners to tab, to tab number six. We're going to it's uh, to approve to add three new positions, registration officers, inventory and systems manager and distribution and warehouse manager to the elections department. Director Kidd, you have the floor. Good morning to the board of commissioners, morning. Uh, Adam County Administrator, County Personnel, and to the general public. Uh, I would like to start with reading a, a letter that was sent from the Board of Elections to the Board of Commissioners. You all should have received a copy of this letter. It's also been included in the minutes for today's meeting. The letter reads as follows. Dear Madam Chair, as you may know, the 2021 Georgia General Assembly adopted a new piece of elections legislation. Uh, from reviewing the legislation, our office, like many other offices throughout the state, is evaluating how we conduct elections and evaluating personnel needs. We have recognized some deficiencies in the staffing uh, that needs to be addressed in the Department of Elections and Voter Registration. We are writing to ask the Board of Commissioners to kindly consider our request to create the following positions in the Department of Elections and Voter Registration as soon as possible. These include Registration Officer, Inventory and Systems Manager, Warehouse and Distribution Manager. The new positions will need to be trained at the first, and the first opportunity for this is the annual conference, which will be held on August the 29th through September 2nd, respectfully by the Georgia Association of Voter Registration Elections Officials. So your immediate action uh, to, on this request is greatly appreciated. The newly adopted legislation will require additional days of voting, new requirements for possible additional precincts, additional poll workers, all of which uh, have to be administered by the county elections workers acting as department leads with temporary staff uh, acting under them. The Douglas County Board of Elections and Registration uh, feels the additional uh, positions created will place the department in a better position to administer the elections process. The office currently consists of three separate locations, which will require permanent staff to oversee temporary staff working at the following locations. The main office at 8700 Hospital Drive, the warehouse and distribution office located at the Douglas County Elections Annex Suite A, our newly constructed absentee processing center also located located at Douglas County Annex Suite D. In addition to the 2020 election cycle, saw the introduction of new election management systems, the election day administration system. This cycle also saw the overall increase of participation rates of voters throughout the state of Georgia. These facts combined with the fact that the state of Georgia is preparing to enter into a new redistricting phase have perpetuated the need to look at the current staff and allocations for the elections department. Furthermore, during the 2010 election cycle, the active voter total for Douglas County was 53,868. The 2010 cycle was the last time that the state of Georgia went through a redistricting phase. We are currently at an active voter total of 103,342 voters. Douglas County voters continue to outpace the voter participation rates, even surpassing statewide participation numbers. Currently, the elections office is operated by only four permanent staff members, one of which is the elections director. We feel that the fast paced and changing nature of elections requires individuals who are trained and in place during all election season. The office right now is operating and has operated with mostly temporary staff members who, by the nature of temporary staff members, do not have a vested interest in the office. Thus, this model creates high turnover rates. It, it takes upwards of two years to adequately train staff members in election laws and procedures. Due to the complicated nature of elections and registration, we feel the office requires individuals that will be with the department on a permanent basis and thus removing the obstacle of departmental knowledge that leads with each temporary staff member finding permanent employment somewhere else. Over the last five years, our staff has been so sought after by other registration offices that they have recruited from our temporary staff. 
we would like to retain that knowledge base inside of Douglas County Board of Elections and registration. It is important to note that with the increased number of voter engagement and participation in the office, the last time uh, the office hired new staff was in 2010. We hope uh, that you would take the request into consideration for these three positions will allow the department uh, to be in a better position to handle the changes that will affect future elections and adhere to mandates in the laws that not only affect Douglas County uh, elections and registration, but other elections offices throughout the state of Georgia. Thank you in advance. Respectfully submitted, Maisha Good, Election Board Chair, David Fedak, Election Board Vice Chair, Bob Proctor, Election Board Member, Maurice Hurley, Election Board Member, Steve Sutton, Election Board Member. I've also uh, taken the time to prepare a slide presentation outlining, outlining some of the duties to which we uh, feel that these new positions will uh, be required to do. I've transmitted that presentation to our communications director, Mr. Rick Martin, if uh, he's able to put those slides on the screen as well. Yes. We're in the process of doing that right now. Okay, next slide, please. The first of these positions, which we will be discussing, are inventory and uh, systems manager. This is just uh, some photographs of some of our elections equ equipment that's separated between the locations. Next slide, please. These are some of uh, the duties under the inventory and systems manager. Um, we have the slides up here. You all can read uh, them for yourself, but essentially the inventory and systems manager will be uh, responsible for cataloging our inventory with the elections department. Just some rough facts and figures for you all. Um, our BMDs, which are our ballot marking devices, the systems by which we vote on, those alone are $1.6 million uh, investment into our county. The poll pads are uh, how we mark voters inside of polling locations. Those are $72,000. Uh, um, the UPSs are battery backups are uh, $60,000. We have $100,000 worth of elections equipment. We have $52,125 worth of ink. We have $49,000 worth of paper. Next slide, please. A uh, part of their duty description include general uh, preventative uh, maintenance. I'll give you all time to read the slide. Next slide, please. On an ongoing uh, monthly, uh, monthly, quarterly basis, we uh, are required to do uh, certain things to uh, the equipment, to test the equipment, to charge the equipment, to maintain uh, that it's still in good working order. These are requirements under Georgia election law. We have uh, cited the different uh, user code section under this slide. Next slide, please. Once again, outlining preventative maintenance. These are polling place scanners, which are disseminated uh, to all of our uh, precincts. These polling place scanners are upwards of $5,000 a piece to replace as well. Next slide, please. Each of, we have a printer uh, capacity with each of our uh, elections equipment. We have gone from when we distribute elections equipment, it used to could be disseminated with one truck. We're now having to disseminate equipment between four and five 26 foot box trucks, as well as uh, vehicles with personnel assisting each of those trucks with loading and unloading. Next slide, please. These slides will be made available on our website. We've also disseminated copies to the board and its respective members as well. Next slide, please. 
the warehouse and distribution manager, this leads into our next component. We maintain all of the equipment for upwards of 30 plus locations, which we're currently looking at expanding those locations for advanced voting and election day. Essentially, we have agreements with these locations to for them to provide us with a facility. We have to bring all equipment, all, all of our needs uh, for administering elections into uh, these facilities. So we have to house, store, and catalog all of that equipment as well, which is one of the main jobs of the warehouse and distribution manager. Next slide, please. As I stated earlier, we have to transmit all of this equipment to all of our uh, advanced voting and election day precincts. Essentially, when you think of elections and registration, most people don't look at it as this, but I like to state that we're in we're uh, in distribution and uh, systems management. By that, I mean we plan large scale events that all have to happen simultaneously. Next uh, slide, please. Some more of our elections equipment that go to the different precincts and, and poll managers. Next slide, please. The last of the three positions is the registration officer. All of my staff uh, have primary uh, duties assigned to them. They also have secondary duties. The registration officer will be responsible for general registration uh, activities throughout the county when you do your change of address with the driver services we get a record when you submit a change of address with the postal service we get a record when you mail in a voter registration we get a record and update your account but they will also take on the added duties because this is a year that the u.s census was conducted so later on in this year the state legislature will be meeting to do to redraw the redistricting lines that means that we will have to adjust uh, the voter files of a substantial number of our douglas county voters what you see on the screen is the numbers presented the last time we were entering into this phase at that time uh, we had roughly 53,868 active voters. Since then, we have essentially doubled in capacity to 103,340 two uh, voters. Roughly, that means based off of our current uh, permanent staff and allocations, each of our staff is responsible for upwards of 25 to 27,000 voters. Uh, the end of, that's the end of the slides, please. I'll address uh, any questions or concerns from the board at this time. Thank you so much, Director Kent, for providing that very thorough update for the Board of Commissioners. Certainly, it's very evident that our volume has increased in terms of the number of voters here. Uh, that tells us that our county is growing exponentially. Uh, board of Commissioners, you have any questions for our director regarding this request? I see a hand, but I don't know whose hand. It's me. <laughs> okay, Commissioner Guide, I don't see your name with the hand. That's why I said I see it. Commissioner Guide, you have the floor. Uh, yes, Director Kidd. Um, a 92% increase, you're saying? Um, uh, I know that we got a million dollar grant from Zuckerberg, and there's been a lot of publicity about that because of uh, their stance in uh, the po politics of our nation. But um, what um, were some of the requirements of that grant? Did I know we had more drop boxes, um, but when you had more drop boxes, did you also have uh, both parties present when you emptied that drop box? Uh, what precautions did you take to uh, ensure the integrity of the election. And also, uh, I would like to know, um, I read in a magazine <laughs> that Douglas County had 101% more people um, registered to vote than were of age to vote. 
and those figures were turned over to the state. Is there any, are there any pending investigations or have we been cited on anything regarding our numbers? Okay, I'll begin with the first part of your question. The grant funding we received, we received grant funding from, well, this is multiple grants. Altogether, Douglas County received 2.2 .2 million in grant funding. Uh, you refer to one of the donors to the organization. We did not receive any grant funds directly from Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, like many other philanthropic individuals, donates to philanthropic organizations. We received a grant from the Center for Tech and Civic Life. The Center for Tech and Civic Life uh, commitment to elections offices is to just provide funding and allow that office itself to administer that funding in the best way that they uh, feel is responsible for their individual citizens. That funding did not come with any what you would see, perceive as strings. By that I mean each uh, of the counties had to submit a proposal of how they uh, felt that those funds could be best allocated, but uh, the overall oversight for the administration of those funds is completely county controlled. So essentially, these were organizations that uh, saw the work that Douglas County Board of Elections and Registration was making in the elections process and decided to help us with those funding. To answer the second uh, question you received with our voter rolls, I have seen the article that you are referring to with 110%. That was a Facebook article that was inaccurate. There has been uh, and there uh, there isn't any state investigations into our voting rolls because that information was wholly and uh, falsely inaccurate. And uh, what I feel is just uh, a way of uh, causing divisions in uh, the process. Our voting rolls are not just maintained by the elections office. The Secretary of State actually has access to our complete voter rolls and they maintain on a continuous basis what the county voter rolls are for each county in Georgia. And they also scrutinize our voter rolls on a regular basis as well. And uh, send information to us to check cases. So we are in complete compliance with the state as far as our voter rolls are concerned. Okay, just for, uh, to, to clarify, it was not a Facebook thing. It was in a magazine, but it was 101% more people that, registered to vote than was of age to vote. And that, this is- um, Yes ma'am, but that initial order from the ma magazine started with a Facebook article of the same nature, but uh, those are unsubstantiated claims that hold no actual basis in, uh, in fact. But um, now I know the federal government requires us to purge our voter list. Uh, do you do it every year uh, as they have not voted in four years? Do you uh, purge the list? Uh, I don't like to use the term purge because of the device <laughs> nature that is associated with that. We do what's called list maintenance. Our list maintenance is required by the state of Georgia and required by every, uh, what required based off of every elections office. That's set by a specific set of rules. We have to engage uh, those voters. If there is any question about the residency of a voter, we send a confirmation notice to that voter. We also follow up with that confirmation notice. The way it works is once a confirmation notice has been issued to a voter, they have 40 days to respond to that confirmation notice. If they do not respond with it, if they do respond within that 40 days, that record is updated uh, with us having contact with their voter and they're up to date. If they do not respond to that letter, then they go into what is called in inactive status. Our voting rolls currently- I think the state law requires too that you follow up to uh, if you're going yes. to remove somebody's name. Uh, yes, our legislature passed a law saying you had to give them notice are warning that their name would be dropped if they, since they had not voted in the past four years or something like that. So it, you do this every year. 
Yes, we, we do. It, it's, it's a continuing basis for list maintenance. The only requirement against uh, list maintenance is there are certain time frames right before an election to which uh, we're procured by law to stop those uh, activities, which for Douglas County Board of Elections, we comply with all state, federal, and local laws as it pertains to elections and registration. Well, I just know uh, with my circle of friends and acquaintances and even family members, they received, uh, remember we in the primary last year, um, ballots were mailed out to ev everybody, okay? And they received people uh, ballots for people that had never lived at that house because they, they knew who had lived there prior. And so there were a lot of <clears throat> reports of the, this type thing. So that that's concerning. Um, even in my own family, uh, uh, my uh, a family member received a ballot for somebody at their address that had never lived at their address. So, um, and they reported it back to you. Uh, they, uh, un unfortunately, they didn't take a picture of it, but uh, they did take a picture of it and send it to you, yes. But, um, uh, so we are purging the files, um, and I hate to use that word, but I think that's what it's called anyway. <laughs> uh, we are- uh, We actively do make list maintenance, yes, ma'am. Okay. And to address the statement that you just made, we do not send unsolicited ballots to individuals. What we happened did last year in the primary? Yes, we didn't send unsolicited ballots to individuals. Nobody uh, that received a ballot from well, let me say it like this: everyone that received a ballot from any elections office, we have to have notification on file of that ballot, which we retain all of that notification. What happened last year is that that was an emergency uh, declaration by the governor during the primary election that the state of Georgia sent every voter a application for an absentee ballot. Every voter associated with an address did receive an application. Then as a follow-up, certain uh, third-party groups also sent applications for absentee ballots, pre-filled applications for absentee ballots to the voters in the state of Georgia. What, uh, what that happened multiple times last year, but that was the application itself. In order to send a ballot to a voter, we have to have a signed uh, notification from that voter on a state approved form to send out a ballot. We're also required to maintain those forms. And for any individual that feels that they received a ballot unsubstantiated, I welcome them to stop by the elections office and we can pull that application and show them. I've had several individuals that did not remember submitting those applications, but those applications also required you to physically sign and supply information to which we can pull all of those applications. I will say also so those applications had to be submitted to the state of Georgia, which we are, have been found in compliance with our complete election. Okay. Uh, I've taken up too much time, uh, Madam Chair, and I'll yield back. Thank you. Thank you mm -hmm. for answering questions. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guyton. Thank you so much, uh, Director Kidd. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Okay, Commissioner Carthen. A quick question. Is it possible for uh, Director Kidd or Director Suvidan to give us the actual um, financials or the appropriations that's going to be needed to carry this out? Because this is a lot of requests. So we know that the money that we've set aside is probably going to go up. We just need to know what that looks like from a board standpoint so that we can do the correct appropriations where we can. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I've uh, supplied, as part of this briefing, the total budgetary impact. I've been working with our current uh, finance director to uh, produce what this looks like as far as budgetary requirements for future years. This uh, a base salary for all three positions at 31,000 plus uh, benefits and amounts to a hundred and seventy-three thousand two hundred and $30 addition to our yearly budget. Now I'm asking that these positions be created 
this year because we have a smaller election season uh, this year. So this will give me time to work with these individuals before we go into next year's election season. The midterm election season for Douglas County is a larger election season with a number of county offices that will be on the ballot. Douglas County tends to have higher voter turnouts during years in which their county contest on the ballot. Now, I'm asking that these positions be created this year, but like Madam Geidner stated, we did receive grant funding. So we have been in communication with the finance department to say that we can fully cover these three positions for the current season. So there will be no current budgetary impact on these positions. What we are looking at and what we're asking this board is to make an investment into the office going forward. I fully anticipate as a department to seek further grant funds and things like that, but those are not guaranteed funds, whereas the workload based off of these positions are present currently uh, in the department and will continue to be a, a need for the department. So I'm asking Douglas County to make an investment in the elections office with the understanding that the investment based off of Douglas County, just like uh, before, was one of the guiding principles for the Center for Tech, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Institute, and multiple other organizations making a $2.2 million investment in our department over the last two years. The Thanks. I'm sorry, basis to answer your question, you all should have okay. in the packet for today the breakdown for financial consideration of these positions as well. And Director Kidd, does that also include space? It does include space. Part of the grant funding is we've been constructing a build out for our office uh, staff. This was also courtesy of the 2.2 million in additional funding that we have been able to receive. We have been taking a long term approach to elections and registration and trying not to be reactive, but be proactive and anticipate the needs of the office and of the county going forward. Thank you so much for that, Madam Chair. You. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Anything else, board, before we move on? No, no okay. I do have one question. Okay, and I saw Commissioner uh, Robinson lean in. Okay. Commissioner, okay. Commissioner yeah. Mitchell, you can go in and, of course, uh, you can close the show, uh, Commissioner Robinson. And, and, and he might start working on trying to get this mute, get his mic off mute, though. But what I'll do, just only one, one or two questions. So, uh, Mr. Kidd, so with the mobile unit that we got grant funding for. We yes. still have that unit and what the what would be the purpose of now that the laws have changed with we, that unit. I'm just curious on that. That's my first question. Yes, sir. We still have that unit. The Senate Bill 202, which is the election registration, actually instructs each county to secure a mobile vote mobile voting unit for emergency purposes. Going forward under the new election bill, we can still utilize uh, the mobile voting unit in emergency purposes. We can also use it for training and voter education. During the 2020 election cycle, we actually had several days in which several precincts due to power outages from a storm that were incapacitated. Having uh, this mobile voting unit in our inventory allows us, even though we can't necessarily deploy it uh, based off of our previous uh, uses that we wanted to use it to alleviate voter lines, for emergency purposes, this is still a viable option. This also gives us a way to take voter education to the voters themselves because this is essentially is a functioning precinct. Voter education and outreach is one of the passions of this office, so it will be utilized still in that capacity as well. And it will also be utilized once again in emergency purposes, which this last presidential election year, we did have precincts go down during the time frame of early voting. In those cases, we would have been able to use this bus as a continuity of operations. Okay, so, so with that, so the laws that have changed, 
still allow you to, if I'm hearing you correctly, to you have the ability to take this vehicle to whatever site and, and post up and vote then from this particular vehicle, if I'm hearing you correctly, or am I? Yes, sir, you, you are hearing me correctly. Okay, okay, good. Because um, I just I just felt bad with the, the, the changing of the law and all the other good stuff that kind of, to me, eliminated that type of a, of a use for voting purposes. But on to the next question. Um, the monies or the grants that we're speaking of and the employees that you're trying to, you know, uh, suggest that you need to kind of move us forward to be proactive, is all of this grant funded or we got to budget this or, or is that a question for you or, or Sharon, are you, maybe you could help with that answer to yeah, that as well. I can weigh in on that, um, okay. Commissioner. The current year for 114,000 will be grant funded. The future full year of 173,000 will need to be included in our fiscal 22 budget preparation. Got it. And that would be also, I'm assuming, benefits in the whole ball of wax, correct? That's fully loaded, yes, sir. Fully loaded. Okay, we got you. Okay, all right. Um, all right. And and I guess last but not least, now with the, the new law that, that stated that you can't have all the drop boxes and all the other good stuff, what are we doing for Douglas Countyans for those voters to be able to do this, which will have to be inside somewhere like the courthouse or something of that caliber? So what are the plans for that? The, the new law mandates that a drop box uh, be in your main registration office because an individual has to have eyes on uh, that drop box location for the entire time frame. We're going to put a drop box location inside the Board of Elections office to be in compliance with the new law. The new law also dictates that it can only be available during the time frames in which early voting is acceptable. So we will be in compliance. As far as our external units, we have at this time not removed our external units. They are physically locked. The current election law is currently facing uh, several election related challenges to uh, the law. So we are in a holding pattern with our external units waiting on those decisions by the court before we take the steps of removing those external units. But right now they're just locked and no one can put anything in them. Closer to the time frame up for an election, we will put a signage on those units directing individuals to where the <clears throat> one uh, box based off of our population size will be located now because based off the current law anyone with a hundred thousand voters or under are only allowed one drop box location which like i stated has to be inside of your office and you physically have to have either a poll worker or officer watching said box for the entire time frame that it is open yeah so so if i hear you correctly there's only one uh, based on our county size, yes. you said under 100 is one. Is it over 100? It's 100,000. <laughs> uh, well, roughly, we it's um, the, the next highest jump uh, for that box would be over 250,000. So to Got add, okay. under the current legislation, to add an additional drop box location. I got you. Okay. All right. I yield back. Thank you again. And, and Sharon, thank you again. I appreciate it. I yield back. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Robinson, you have the floor. Can you hear me? I can. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. <clears throat> yeah, this, this required all of us to weigh in. This was an important topic. So I, I appreciate joining the conversation um, regarding elections. It's the only reason that we exist. You know, obviously without, um, Obviously, the, the elections, there's really no real America, the great experiment. So this requires us to have a conversation. Um, again, I, I do want to acknowledge the fact of the whole, thank you for the clarity, Director Kidd, regarding um, the Zuckerberg and the clarity. I mean, I, I won't get into that. I mean, obviously, you, you, you can't be convened on both sides. You can't live on Facebook and then complain about its influence. Uh-huh. Right. Um, I tend to be a PBA slash NPR type guy, but OK, I get everybody get this just wherever they get from. That's fine. Um, 
That being said, um, Director Kidd, you know that we need to strengthen, and I'm glad to see that the Board of Elections recognized I've been waiting on this. Uh, when they move the cheese, you have to get ahead of this. Elections are important. The current movement by the state was it destabilized by design and with, with the veil of we're strengthening. No, it didn't. But it's OK. I get it. We just have to make sure we're, we're we, it's a mandate. Thou shall. We need to get ahead of this. So duly noted, I think um, Commissioner Carthy hit on the head. I just want to get to the net. OK, what is the fiscal impact? And I think you guys clarified that. Um, um, thank you, um, um, County Madam Administrator, as well, which is like, OK, in this immediate year, what is the impact? Got it. And, and go ongoing. So the grant will take care of it this year. We got it going for next year. Um, you, you need to have formality. Um, uh, it, it's too wrought with a lot of volunteers. And people come with their obviously their political bend and how they do it and how people are treated at the polls. You need more stability. I mean, that's the whole point. You want to drop this down on this on at the local level, and there's no funding, and you're gonna make it like it's got everything's got to be doing working hours. What? <laughs> but okay. So that means there's going to be increase in the budget to deal with that unfunded mandate. I have no problem with that. So but I, I won't go as long. Um, duly noted, I'm open to this. Um, I guess whatever they ask is. To, so are we asking for this to be, are we voting tomorrow? Is that what I'm yeah. hearing for the adjustment for the budget? Is that what we're asking for? For this current year, yes, because we're our adding three additional pe positions. I got it. All right, well, we got to do what we got to do. Again, mm -hmm. we got those mandates. You you got to adjust. Now, you have to show me how it's going to work. I don't have to belabor this right now. Um, again, but it is what it is. Um, I'm sufficiently clear for the moment. Madam Chair, we've gone long enough. I yield the floor. I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman. And thank you so much, um, uh, Director Kidd and our county administrators, you chimed in. Certainly, um, we will pivot and make adjustments accordingly uh, to this unfunded, uh, unman um, unfunded mandate. We're going to move on. Board of Commissioners, it's your pleasure. We're going to move on to tab number seven, authorization to purchase a 72-inch commercial moor of a total cost of $9,554 to be uh, funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds allocated for the equipment as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes, you have the floor. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, yes, we're requesting to purchase a 72-inch mower that we use. These, these mowers are used to maintain our park system and to cut grass throughout the system. And it is a recommendation of the Recreation Oversight Committee, and it will be splashed funds. Okay, thank you so much, Director Dukes. Any questions from the board? All right, we're going to move on. Thank you so much, uh, Director Dukes. We're going to move on board to tab number eight, authorization to purchase an infill grooming machine at a total cost of $21,716 to uh, be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds allocated equipment as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Director Dukes, you have the floor again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, another piece of equipment that's vital to our operation. We use it to maintain our ball fields throughout the county uh, and get them ready for the games for all the athletic associations. Recommended by the Oversight Committee and again, splash funds. Okay. Any questions from the board or remarks? Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. OK, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, very quickly, this is related when, since you mentioned sports. So obviously, it, uh, we've got new facilities coming online, uh, specifically the community center. Um, and I'd like to get a status on the building itself. Um, um, that, that cannot go without being addressed. As I know we had weather-related impact. I was hoping that we'd have an opportunity during the SPLOS update, but we didn't get that. That's fine but we still have to have accounting every month on that $100 million. And so I'd like to know where do we stand on the building and how you will address, I mean, obviously um, you've got, um, you know, the upcoming season and how that's going to be addressed. Can you respond to that, Director Dips, where we stand, please? Yes, sir. As far as the building is concerned, we are about 90% uh, complete with the building. Uh, they initially had anticipated a July 1st, turnover 
Uh, we have had some concerns with the elevator. Um, some of the equipment in the elevator was the building that housed the components of the elevator uh, was damaged in a tornado over in Alabama. They are now assessing that building and moving equipment from one building to another uh, to see if there, the equipment was damaged and if there will be any delay getting any of that equipment to us. Uh, we should hear something next week uh, from the company. Uh, so um, we're kind of waiting on hold. Uh, other than the elevator, we're on, uh, we're on course to hit the completion date. As far as uh, opening, uh, we are now interviewing staff and uh, our recreation manager and our recreation coordinators. We're receiving applications and hope to have someone hired shortly. Thank you, Director Duke. So to, to, to on behalf of District 2, which is important, this was an important initiative that came forth. Um, it's something that's important to the 2016 SPLOST. This is what the public asked for. So again, we get all the way down here to the end and it's important that we continue um, um, updating the public on um, those key deliverables. Um, um, I, while we appreciate plans um, and you know, one of the things that's important for the public is like show us the fruit of what I asked for before. And so this is, um, Director Dukes, you know, um, this was important. Um, I, I wanted to make sure I give an account to the citizens. Okay, like, wait a minute, now what happened? Just tell the public there was damage. And so, okay, how are you going to now reconcile that? Just tell them. And so I, I need to get the status on that. So Commissioner Mitchell, I know you got this, man. Will you please make sure that we recover this and make sure we adequately have information that we can share with the public on what the status of that building um, and when it comes online. And, and again, if we have to pause delivery date because of the elevator, well, that makes sense. We will not expose the public. I cannot allow you to use, I cannot support you know, taking some equipment from a damaged building to be put in there. Tell the public where we are um, and, 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 and keep that thing moving. Um, so uh, again, I appreciate your response. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing else, uh, Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on. Thank you so much. Uh, Director Dukes. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell, you have the yeah, floor. Just one brief comment. So, I don't care if you want to, I mean, yes, Vice Chairman Robinson, we are actually trying to, I guess, look to where we are, but I don't know, Gary, if, do you have an update or you want to kind of kind of look into that before you make a comment on that, that particular question? I think you're frozen on me, Gary. Okay, so I, I, I'll do it this way. So, there will be I another. Can I okay, can jump go in. Okay, go ahead, uh, Madam. Uh, Manager, go ahead. Yeah, I prefer that we get back to you. Um, yes. We were looking at some alternate sources for that elevator equipment. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that that will be successful. And as you know, we're revamping our SPLOS presentation, but that information will be coming back in a more meaningful fashion to you. Understood, understood. And, and I just knew that that part of it. And I, I guess I just wanted to prepare to kind of update the vice chairman, but you're right, we, that, that information will be kind of coming forward. And you're right, we don't know exactly what that looks like until we find out more on that that particular company situation and or where do we move if we move in a different direction to get the elevator. And it will not be used or damaged goods. That's correct. In, in, in this, this nice no. building. So. That's but, correct. Okay, I, I'll leave it there though. Thank you, uh, Sharon. I appreciate it. And Gary, you're frozen, so we can't get, we won't get a chance to talk to you. We'll talk to you later. I'll yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to move on to tab number Madam nine. Chair. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson. Which is really just to that point. If a key deliverable is, uh, we've established a schedule, which is July 1st, and something uh, along the, the critical path has happened, such as the delivery of um, um, functionality allows you to get it up and down the building. Um, and it's okay. That means that they're, they're, the bomb's already gone off, right? So. The question becomes, if, the, if it's on the critical path, that means by default, the date slips. You will work out the detail associated, like, okay, what happened or not, but in setting the public's expectation, like they're looking at, well, okay, we know that it already happened. So are we looking at a one month delay? And so that's really what I'm getting at. I'm not get, trying to get into the weeds. It's setting the public's expectations. It's th their understanding. There's no reason to suppress that. 
just like, okay, guys, something happened. We have no control over Mother Nature. They get it. So the question becomes like, okay, so we're probably off by 30 days. So we're looking at August 1st. That's fine. You, 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 that's fine. You will work out the details as far as, I mean, the obligation and all that stuff. And you work through all that. I Really, I'm just trying to get to setting the public's expectation. Right. Um, and so that's all I'm trying to get a feel for. So where is our contract? Put some pressure on our contract. Okay, but where are we at now? All right. So is there some type of liability, some type of exposure? Like, okay, errors and omission, contract law. Right. Okay, I get it. Nature happens. All right. Where's my supply? Okay, we we and again, this is us going back to like, okay, now how y'all gonna finish this now? Yeah, under contract. It's not for staff to do it, staff to facilitate. All right, there's a difference. The question is, okay, when y'all go finish my building so the public can get access to it? So that's all we're looking for. Is a, um, I was looking for some information regarding that. I mean, it's nothing that, that, that the staff did wrong or did not do. That's not what this is about. It's a mother nature impacted us. That's fine. We understand. We yield. And we just simply want to respond adequately to that. Uh, but we want to make sure that we open communication. We talk. That's all we're looking for. Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. We're good. And Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. and, and I know we, we're not, this is not a debate for my vice chairman and myself, but I think, Sharon, I think what we're, the bigger question is, what is plan B? Meaning, if the elevator can't be produced by these guys based on the situation, because here's one thing I will add, the, the construction and the, the work on the building hasn't stopped. That's it's right. Still, yeah, it's still moving forward. The elevator is one component, but it doesn't stop. So I think it has changed the time frame. I don't say by much, but I don't know until we can kind of know kind of where the elevator, if it's coming from this location or another. So in that vein, we're moving forward. The question is, where do we move forward with the elevator? But correct me if I'm wrong, the construction and everything else, we still on the way with that thing and it's still moving forward. Am I correct in that, Sharon? Yes, construction is continuing and we are, as I said, looking for an alternate source. If we can't get an alternate source, we'll get an effective date and we may come back with a plan B, but we'd like to have that solidified. And so by next meeting, we'll have a better um, update for the public, but it certainly will be well in advance of the July deadline. And, and just FYI, it will be delayed. We just don't know kind of how long what the delay will consist of, but the construction side of it hasn't stopped, just FYI. And I, I wouldn't say it would be delayed. I would prefer right. to come back to you with Understood. more solid information. Understood, and, I, and I, would, I, I just, from being realistic, I think it will be delayed just because <clears> of the fact that we're trying to kind of get our arms around them, which is the elevator side of it. But nothing has stopped with the construction, so I just wanna make sure that the public understand that we haven't stopped construction, everything is still moving forward, Commissioners to tab number nine authorization to rescind the award to Prime Foundation LLC and cancel the uh, solicitation number 20 009 for construction of storage building for the Douglas County Fire Department as recommended by the Fire and EMS Committee. The vendor has requested a significant change order in the amount of $118,839.33. And is, uh, and is not recommending proceeding with the purchase at this time. We have our Director Evers uh, on the line. Are you here, our purchasing director? Yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. Good morning. You Last year, a bid opening was held for the solicitation of the construction of the storage building for the fire department. In response to the invitation, Douglas County received 15 bids. All bids were evaluated for compliance with the bid documents and references were contacted. On February the 16th, 2021, the Board of Commissioners approved the award of a contract in the amount of $794,294 to Prime Foundation LLC. At the award of the contract, Prime Foundation presented the fire department with a change order in the amount of $118,839.33, which exceeded the amount budgeted for this effort. 
Therefore, we're asking that this award be rescinded and the solicitation be canceled in its entirety. Okay, thank you so much, Director Evers. Any questions from the board? Thank you. Wait, we can yes. uh, wait. Go ahead, I'll go, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Go. Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, uh, Dawn, we're not going to build the um, storage shed out there for the equipment. At this time, um, the fire department, the fire chief is not going to recommend building this at the time. Okay. At um, one of the last meetings I attended with fire and EMS, we considered part of it being like a lean-to shed that did it, where the equipment did not have to be inside, but just sheltered from the weather. Um, was that considered uh, in the uh, bid process? During the bid process, no, that was not considered. Okay. Well, um, I think we need the shed to protect uh, the equipment, but um, I hope we move forward with uh, some kind of a shelter so um, this just has a delayed it a little bit more. I think this has been going on for well over two years now. So anyway, maybe we can move forward with it in some manner. Thank you. All right, thank you. Commissioner Robinson, you have the floor. No, I mean, their, their response adequately did it. I'm fine, Madam Chair, go ahead. Okay. All right, Board of Commissioners, I'm gonna move on to the next item at your pleasure. Thank you so much, Director uh, Evers. Board of Commissioners, we're going to go to tab 10, up approval of an agreement with Tyler Technologies for the new tax uh, software system and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And this item actually was tabled on April 6, 2021. We have our uh, tax commissioner here with us this morning. Tax Commissioner Baker, Baker, Baker you're on the line. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good and morning. I I'm going to start off by saying I'd like to thank the new county administrator for visiting me. We had a very productive conversation in the last five years that I've been here. That's the first time county administrator has visited my office, sat down with me and gone over concerns that I have for my office. So I really want to thank her and I look forward to working with her. Uh, as far as on the agenda today, I think it's just a routine uh, vote for you guys to recommend signing the contract. So nothing else to say on that unless you got questions. We've already got it approved. I think we just missed the signing part at last meeting. So okay, that's it. All right. Thank you so much, Tax Commissioner. Any questions or remarks from the board? If not, we're going to move on. All right. We're going to move on board to tab number 11, authorization for the fire department to enter into a pricing agreement with Zoll Medical pending for legal review and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Uh, Chief Jolivet, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to say hello to all the board members and the citizens and also to our county manager. Uh, the cardiac equipment is, it's, we use old medical for the cardiac equipment that we use. And uh, we're trying to cut our costs by saving money by, by uh, joining into an agreement with them. Uh, some stats that we had from 2019, we ran about 23 cardiac emergencies in, in uh, January. And in January 2020, we had 26. But alarmingly, in January 2021, we had 41. So the cardiac uh, emergencies are continuing to go up. And uh, this agreement will give us an opportunity to uh, save some money annually by going into a cardiac agreement, well, a medical agreement with the cardiac company. So we're asking the board to consider it uh, for approval. And I do have Michelle Mahaney, if y'all need to have any questions, any specific questions about Zoll on the line. Okay. Board of Commissioners, we have any questions for um, Chief Jolivet or Michelle Mahaney regarding this request? Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Chief, um, thank you. Uh, I just want one. Um, I want to acknowledge, um, you know, it's important that we, we provide data. Uh, and um, just that, that that sensitivity shows, us, okay, the, the, why you're asking what you're asking, which is, you know, I, I pay attention. Like, okay, we got that many cardiac at that moment. Mm -hmm. 
And this is to staff, like it's important guys provide data so we can appreciate the need so that we can we can support it versus just a rubber stamping it. It's like, oh no, I get it. Oh, okay. I understand. Right, because that's how I mean that that helps me relate to my citizens. Like, okay, that many instances, oh, I almost double. Oh, it did double. Mm -hmm. We need to have that 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 type of equipment there. That, so there's my justification. Like, oh, okay, my citizens are, they got issues there. Ooh, there have moments. So I appreciate just that um, that small change that we're, we're we, you know um, with your arrival, we're now getting what we're looking for, which is it, 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 data is important. So thank you for that. Um, and I, I, that's it. I just wanted to make that comment that that mattered to me, um, that to be able to hear that, that now I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. And it's not that I'm going to sit there and deny you need to have equipment to take care of the citizens. It yes. goes without saying. I get it, but you you gave me what I needed. So you, thank you, Madam Manager. I think you get it. Madam Chair, I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you thank, thank you so much. Any other questions from the board? Now we're going to move on to the next item. Uh, Chief Joe Levette, you have the next item as well, which is staff number 12, authorization to review all app options and data to purchase two area fire trucks as per the Fire and EMS Committee uh, recommendation. Chief Joe Levette, you have the floor. Again, thank you, Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, uh, citizens from Douglas County. Uh, we have done a community assessment on the needs of the community. And we looked at, there's a gap uh, for the fire, fire department service that we're providing. And uh, it, it's in form of a ladder truck. And uh, we're in need of purchasing two ladder trucks to meet our needs for ISO and also meet the needs of our citizens. And what we've done is look at uh, several funding options, but we want to explore them a little bit further, uh, dealing with uh, funding sources for two ladder trucks uh, the thing about the ladder trucks, at, after talking with uh, our county administrator, who's very experienced in fleet and uh, things of that nature, uh, it's going to take a little time to build the ladder trucks. Uh, it takes about roughly a year if you get them uh, 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 modified to, to the standards of the city, of the county. Uh, they do have stock trucks that are already available, but the trucks that we're looking for will meet our needs uh, for the western part of the county, for the eastern part of the county, and then we do, we also have a truck right now in the middle part of the county that we, we're using. So we're looking at options to go ahead and uh, proceed with finding funding to secure ladder trucks. Uh, like I said, we have several options that should be available to you. Uh, one is dealing with uh, uh, monies from the uh, storage building as well as some other fundings that we have from one of our trucks that were wrecked on 20. Uh, so we're just looking to move forward expeditiously and getting uh, some approval from the board to get some, some ladder trucks for our needs. Thank you so much, uh, Chief Jolivan, our chief. Any questions from the board regarding this request? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Commissioner Guider, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, Chief. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, uh, is this going to take the place of uh, uh, pumper trucks that we had scheduled to uh, purchase? No, ma'am. We do, we still have uh, the pumper trucks on schedule with our, our splash funding. After talking with Mr. Gable, he showed us uh, three different options uh, in terms of splash funding to secure ladder trucks. And uh, so this will not take the place of our schedule for the pumps that we have coming in. We have one scheduled for July, and then we have two scheduled for our, our fifth year in terms of our splash funding. So this this will not affect that at all. Yeah. Well, ladder trucks, I think, are in the neighborhood of around a million dollars each. So uh, I just wondered, uh, now the storage building, so that's off the, the plate uh, as far as uh, building a storage building to house some equipment that we need to house? Let, let me speak to that just quickly. Uh, looking back, you know, the community needs are constantly changing. And one thing that, that, that's done jumped out at us is that ladder trucks that were wrecked uh, in 2019. We had a ladder truck that was wrecked. And uh, it, 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 we had to start focusing on 
meeting the ISO needs, and that was that's going to affect us directly. So, as far as the storage building, uh, we're going to look at it in the future. Uh, but right now, our immediate needs is to get those ladder trucks. I know I talked to you before, and and uh, we really need to get those ladder trucks up and going so we can take care of uh, the, the Thornton Road area with all the storage build. I mean, all the manufacturing houses, yeah. yeah. And then the, the western part of the county. So that's something we're going to look at in the future in our strategic planning. Uh, but right now, our immediate community needs are to get get ladder trucks and go ahead and get them ordered so we can get them in. Okay. My main concern was whether or not this was going to replace uh, pumper trucks that were needed. But you're saying it's not going to affect the uh, acquisition of future uh, pumper trucks that we had scheduled. Yes, ma'am. They're, they're scheduled, and one thing about it, the uh, replacement plan that the county manager has brought into it to, to the county is uh, that's right in line with what we're trying to do as far as uh, replacing those trucks, and and uh, so that's not affected at all. Okay. I mean, Thank you very much. I yield back, madam. Okay. Thank you. Any other remarks from the board before we move on? Thank you so much, Bar Chief. Board of Commissioners, uh, if you uh, certainly would so kindly take a look at the approval of the expenses for tomorrow and be prepared to approve accordingly. And then also, Board of Commissioners, we have uh, going forth a discussion item, which would be uh, the board appointment for Animal Control Advisory Board uh, position is coming. And then also we have not only that, but a, a Board of Assessors, Housing Authority Board, and that will these items will be discussed in the executive session. So, Board of, of Commissioners, I certainly want, if you had uh, some remarks that you want to make before I uh, chime in with our uh, attorney to see if we need to go into executive session, just wanted to check with you to make sure you didn't have any um, statements or remarks that you would like to make at this time. Being none, um, uh, Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, Madam Chair, uh, my understanding of executive session is needed for personnel and we will need Fred Perry to join us. Okay. Okay, with that being said, uh, Board of Commissioners, I, I believe I see your mouth moving, Commissioner Robinson. Yes. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Mm, you have the floor. Uh, yeah, and I, I could not get to, um, I, I mean, you have litigation as well. I'd like to get the status of one of our lawsuits. Um, okay. From our county attorney. So, Ken, can you amend the request? Yeah, sure. Before? Yes, sir. We we can discuss litigation as pending and uh, personnel. Okay. I'm sure that's all I needed. Thank you. Okay. With that being said, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. second. Okay. We have a motion in two seconds. We have a motion in a second, and I believe I heard Commissioner Carthen second first. We have a motion in a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners? Wait, just to clarify what. We got the motion was Madam, Madam Chair, Carthen. you actually and, had me to motion. Mind, I had you motion, had okay. And who was the second? And, okay. Uh, Commissioner Robinson to second. Madam Guider. Okay, Madam Guider has the second. Yep. Thank you for yielding, Vice Chair. Yep. <laughs> we thank you all for correcting me. We uh any discussion, Board of Commissioners. We have a motion and a second. When I call your districts, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5 0 unanimous vote, and the motion carries to go into executive session. Clerk, you have um, you are now you have the wheel. You can tell us give provide directions, clerk. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you can just hang up from this call, but stay on Teams, and I will call you into um, a separate meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Board of Commissioners, hold, hold on, uh, Clerk. Board of Commissioners, please feel uh, free to, I would like for you to take a five minute break. Uh, so it is now 1131. If you could just at least start calling us at 1136. We'd like for the board to take a, just a, a five minute yeah. break. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you so much, TJ. And thank you again, Board of Commissioners, for engaging in our executive session. And also thank you to the citizens, citizens of Douglas County for your patience. Mm -hmm. Board of Commissioners, do you have any announcements or remarks that you would like to make um, uh, at this time regarding any upcoming events or anything that you may have on uh, coming down the pike? 
Madam Chair. Uh huh. Vice Chairman uh, Robinson, you have just, the floor. Just no much so much as uh, an announcement. We'll announce it tomorrow on the floor. But I do have a mental health um, children's mental health form that's coming up this coming Thursday. I just want to make sure that our communications department and everybody has adequately got that information out to the public. So, and that is an announcement on tomorrow's agenda. So I'll make the more official statement tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Any other board member? Okay, with that being said, I will just close things out today and just really, uh, again, thank you, Board of Commissioners, uh, commissioners for taking the time uh, to engage in our work session and wanted to remind the public that we are still ever present in this um, pandemic. And I just urge you to please make sure you adhere to those three W's, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, watch your social distancing, and also certainly wear a mask in public. Uh, particularly those who have not been vaccinated. Uh, right now, uh, I would like to just urge you, if you just could consider vaccination, those uh, citizens who have not uh, taken the, the leap of faith to go with the vaccination. Right now, Douglas County, the last report from our public health division was we're at 14% fully vaccinated in Douglas County, and the state average is 34%, which tells us we're behind the eight ball. So I'm encouraging you and also the Board of Commissioners just to, if you would consider um, to, and it's certainly not mandatory, uh, if you would consider the vaccine as we try to reach herd immunity. Herd immunity is around 70%, so that tells you we have a long way to go. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, I ask that you still uh, take those precautions and those measures to protect yourself and others around you. If there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, uh, Board of Commissioners, thank you today again. And thank you, our County Administrator and our County Attorney and our, all our staff and directors uh, for taking the time to meet with us today for this work session. If there's nothing else to come before this body, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.